Okay. I just had to take this all apart because yesterday when I rode this, now this is after I fixed the throttle. By the way, the throttle is like brand new. Uh, my cruise control didn't work and here's the cruise control button here. And uh, I took this apart and up under here, there's some wires that go up into the handlebar. And I just wanted to be sure that I didn't have those wires pinched and I did not. So I put it back together. I still don't know why the cruise isn't working, but right now I'm gonna take the fairing off and uh, put my winter windshield on because, you know, fall weather, winter, I ride all year round. So, uh, you know, my tall windshield keeps the frostbite air off my face. So to get the fairing off, I'll take one, two, and then up here, all these across here, and then you carefully slip the fairing off around the uh, spotlights. This will come off with it. And then in the meantime, there's a whole bunch of crap inside there that I'm gonna cut out. Wires that don't belong there anymore. Uh, whoever had this had all had a, a spaghetti mess of wiring because they had added speakers and amplifiers and and they had speakers in the lowers and so i have from here up to the fairing i've got all that wiring removed even to the battery where they had the uh, amplifier hooked into the battery what a mess just a minute so i'm going to pull the fairing off and finish cleaning up the wires there's a Sirius XM antenna under there. There's a CB radio under there. I'm taking all that mess out. Uh, every ounce I can get on the, off this bike is uh, a little longer that my aging body can hold this bike up. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I don't even carry, I used to carry bucket loads of tools with me and a battery booster and, and uh, I just carry the bare minimum of, of tools now. And I do have a battery booster in one side and some tools in the other. And when you want, when you carry weight, you want to keep your weight as low as possible. So I put heavy things in the saddlebags and light stuff like a bottle of water and my hat that I wear on the trunk. So let me get this fairing off. Okay, I got everything, all the nuts that I, all the screws that I normally take off, off, and I couldn't get it off. And then I uh, did a little Googling and, uh, <laughs> there's another on each side of the fork there's another see that right back there right here that has to come out as well see all these silly wires just hanging this whoever did this electrical work man oh and I noticed this stripped you don't realize some people are just absolute hacks that's all there is to it and uh I'll tell you the truth. If I had looked at this bike before I bought it, now I bought it off the internet, had to go to Dallas. David, my neighbor and friend, uh, went over there and rode it back for me because I had just gotten out of the hospital. And when I realized I was going to live, uh, I decided I wanted to get another bike. So uh, probably if I had seen all the junk that they had added to it, and whenever night, always but young people they get so excited to have amplifiers and even on the inside there was tweeters and subs and just i had no idea i never would have bought this bike especially if i knew it was like a home job and this is what they did was just leave wires dangling and splicing into things i have done so much electrical uh, repair work on this from from there up actually to the battery I've had the gas tank off. I've had to pull wires out that didn't belong there. Man, what a pain in the neck. And I don't even care about music. Now, when I had music, yeah, I listen to it occasionally. But uh, I don't care enough about music to go tapping into the electrical system. So I'm going to get that fairing off. i got two more screws and the fairing will come off. And then I'll show you the mess in there. Good God, what a mess. What a complete mess. These were plugged in here. And what these were, 
or aftermarket add-on underglow lights that uh, runs off the headlight. Do you want anything running off your headlight besides your headlight? Not me. Anyway, let's see. I don't know what. Oh, yeah. These, all these speaker wires I'm taking out, and I'm thinking about taking these huge, heavy, heavy speakers off my fairing. I really think it'll make a big difference, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to pull a couple of screws. I'm going to just take the screws off and see how heavy they are. If they're real heavy, I'm taking them off. I'm not going to listen to music. And uh, them back there, if I had some, like, black screen or something, I'd take the speakers off and just cover those holes up with some black screen. We'll see. But these first. I can get to them anytime. So let me pull these silly wires off. And uh, I've already, this is what I've got out of here so far. And that's all for the radio and uh, stuff like that. So a little bit more work here. Tell you what, I don't know how much these weigh, but five, six pounds, easy. Let's just say this is 12 pounds worth of speakers that were up high in my fairing. And God Goo oodles and oodles of just junk wires that aren't connected to anything. Didn't go anywhere. They're hanging down everywhere. So, uh, yeah, I've tidied this up. And then I did something that I'm glad I did. Um, all these bolts that hold the fairing on, all of them were very loose. And uh, that one and that one was really hard to get to there. I had to get vice grips on and I couldn't get an Allen wrench to it. Good thinking, Harley Davidson. So, uh, all right, I'm fixing to put this back together. I am gonna wax the very bottom of that because you can never get to it uh, when it's on the bike. So I'm gonna clean all the bugs off the, I'm talking about underneath the very bottom there. Okay, I'm glad I did that. So uh, next, I'm going to look for, I don't need these speakers. And they rattle, and I don't even know what kind of, those are alpine. So uh, what I'm going to get is some, some kind of wire mesh. That t I take these speakers out, and I just screw this wire mesh on over here. It'll look good. Speaker covers, you know, I'll look for some speaker covers. And they've got, you know, fabric behind them, so you can't look through it and see that they're empty cavities. And uh, between those two speakers, these two speakers, and all the junk wire, and I'll bet you I'll have 20 pounds off the the height of the bike, which will bring the center of gravity down a little bit lower. Alrighty, I mean, I've already done the, the lower fairings had speakers in them and uh, subs on both sides and tweeters and, and the amp. So I uh, probably got 40 pounds off the bike already and another 20 pounds, that's gonna make a huge difference. All right, take a little break. And wax the bottom of that and then put everything back together. Okay. That was actually a lot more work than I thought. <laughs> Got the windshield on. I'm going to sit on this and I hope to God this windshield is above my eye line, my eyesight. Oh, and it is. Good deal. Okay. So this is where my eyes are. And uh, this is the top of the windshield. Fantastic. Fantastic. And uh, I'll tell you what. <laughs> This is, I can, it's not my imagination, but it is definitely lighter up top. All right. I want to go for a ride now. Whew. Alrighty, that's it. I am going to put a coat of wax on this and clean that windshield off because I got my uh, fingerprints all over it. I'm just going to wax the front where it takes the most beating from the bugs. All right, Wednesday we got a funeral. See you in a bit. I just Googled how much these speakers weigh. And uh, they still sell these, that, that model number and everything. And they weigh 10.7 pounds each. That is 20 pounds of speakers in the fairing at the highest point in the bike. You know, uh, Charlie tried lifting my bike up off the kickstand. She couldn't even do that. And she's a strong woman. So, uh, you know, when you have weight that's higher up 
and it's leaning, uh, it takes a lot more effort to get it up straight. Anyway, uh, these go for about 160 bucks. So I'm going to put them on Facebook and I'm going to ask 50 bucks for them. Okay. I don't know what I'm going to do next. Oh yeah, wax. I got a wax. Good morning. We're going to tell you about a rattle that drove us nuts. Uh, we had a Freightliner and Freightliners are just notorious for rattles and shakes and squeaks and shimmies and, and, uh, we had a rattle that was particularly driving us nuts. Well, let me back up. I went to as far as taking apart the interior of my Freightliner and putting that foam insulation with a sticky back around all the parts that made connections and screwed together. And I did. I eliminated about 9% of the rattles, but we had this one rattle that sometimes it was there and sometimes it wasn't. And it was, you know, the first 20 minutes, it didn't bother you. But after a day of this rattle, it would drive you nuts. And we finally figured out what it was. You remember what it was, hon? I don't. The little ring around the Coke bottle. Remember that? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I remember that. The ring, when you unscrew the Coke bottle, it leaves that little locking ring, and we'd set it in a cup holder, and that ring would rattle, 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 rattle. <laughs> It took us a year we suffered with that rattle. I mean, I destroyed the truck taking it apart looking for that rattle, and it was a little ring around the Coke bottle, and uh, once we realized that, when we undid a Coke bottle, we'd take a knife and pop that ring off, rattle gone. Well, you know, you're saying that like it was really quiet in there. No, I mean, there were rattles that were never going to go. Just one of but, hundreds. Yeah, but it was that one rattle that you knew that weren't wasn't supposed to be there. Like, it would be there, and then it wouldn't. So you're looking for it, but... Yeah, that, that does sound crazy considering you're in a big truck going down the road at yeah. 70 miles an hour. But. And then that was Freightliners. And all my life, <laughs> Freightliners were just notorious for shakes and rattles. I got real good at taking apart the, you know, components in the dashboard and insulating them with, you know, sound dampening stuff. And uh, uh, we didn't get our sanity back until we bought our first Kenworth. And when you close the door, that was like stepping from uh, a loud concert, rock concert, uh, into a peaceful, trickling little brook stream with birds in the background. <laughs> it was such a difference, it was hard to believe. And then, as bad as I hate to say anything good about Volvo, the antichrist of trucks, uh, that Volvo, when you closed the door, you could hear your heartbeat. I mean, it was so quiet in that truck. It was like driving a car. No rattles, no squeaks. And, you know, in every other truck, you hit a bump, and it's like you got to regain your consciousness. In the Volvo, you'd hit a bump that would, uh, you know, make you lose your memory in a Kenworth or any other truck. And you hit in a Volvo, and it was just like, oh, a little bump. Okay. Yeah, everything's okay. But no worries. How many airbags did we blow? Constantly. I had to buy airbags and keep them with me. I had to bring a jack so I could replace the airbags on the road. And, you know, the first 20 times when the airbag blew, uh, it would scare you, scare the crap out of you. Because all of a sudden... Yeah, the you were you'd driving be, lops. Yeah, you'd be going down the road and all of a sudden, boom, boom and your truck would be driving down the road like this. And if you hit a bump, the wheel would hit the fender. It was just... Ah, oh, that Volvo. I have nightmares still about that Volvo. But when it rode, when it ran, oh, it was just a dream of a truck. But it was also a nightmare of a truck. So, have a yeah, good morning. I didn't have gray hair or wrinkles when yeah. I bought that Volvo. I wasn't fat till we got the Volvo. Okay, that's a lie. <laughs> anyway, one more cup of coffee, and then we're going to start our day. Have a good Sunday. Well, it'll be Monday when you see this. trade you i'll trade you no you like the you like the blue one because it's soaking wet with dog spit Ha, 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 ha.
12 years old. He plays like a puppy. Boy, they had a good breakfast this morning. We had some uh, leftover ribs, and we pulled the good meat off it, not the fat, and uh, cooked up three eggs and mixed them rib meat in there with a little bit of dry dog food. And now <laughs> she's running around like crazy, and he's fixing to go back to sleep. Sleepy boy. Are you a sleepy boy, huh? All right, let's get our day started.